Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, you are now rocking with the best. You are now entering into A Deuce territory. Comprised of uh-huh. Supernova Slum, Tuesday Medicine Man, I scared to do the tears. Been here for about a billion years. So we're about to get right into it right now. So yeah, Supernova Slum, let the bitch hear. Uh, the hair blow out here. But it took for us to get here. Cram in my skin up. Cram in my skin up. Sad side, more stuff is planted through clubs. Killing and killing my reason is standing. I'm beating you niggas this man from. Wait up for Adar. Snade us, no fake us. Salute us, maneuver us. Some sonic women group us. Who us? Who 
now have to systematically work together, let's say, share information, which is not necessarily a bad thing. However, when you deal with the clandestine services of the United States and put them in the mix of that, what you get is a powder keg of psychological or criminal operations running concurrently with real, let's say, state-fostered operations in which both agencies or the clandestine agency doesn't allow the basic state agency to know that it's running drills or or uh, rec shows in their city. So this is how when you see movies, how you have the FBI agent like in the party, you have the guy who's selling the cocaine and then he gets arrested, but then he gets out. It turns out later that he's actually an informant for the FBI, which means that the FBI gets his information and does everything they need to do because he's a paid informant. So they allow him to make money, kill people, sell drugs, rape, torture, whatever he needs to do so long as he gets them information, which then makes them his part, basically. However, they have to hide that relationship from the state people who may have an open uh, investigation on this person who then have to work things and things to try to get him arrested. So on one hand, you have the federal people working with the criminal who is then working against the state, but the federal government is really not, that's not a jurisdiction. Yet they are supporting a criminal activity in the state which goes against their basic mandate. However, when we do the now to the FBI, remember that the initial mandate for the FBI was to stop the rise of the black messiah. Not to stop crime, not to investigate crime, but to specifically do that. And this was enshrined under the jurisdiction or the rulership of J. Edgar Hoover. Notorious transvestite, racist, uh, self-hating racist, and um, shriner. So these things are, again, in active play right now. So this also goes to say that the New York police system is under the quiet jurisdiction of Homeland Security, but under or above them or working analogous to them, they get their training through intelligence services. So basically what I'm saying is CIA is running the NYPD. So really NYPD is the CIA NYPD right now, which is why they're doing so many different uh, operations, like the operation where they were diverting people based on the detour signs and all of that. All of that is intelligence work. The whole beating people up, arresting people, and then while they're handcuffed, beating them up, all of that is a psychological operation. The police did the same thing. They trained the police to do the same thing uh, to the people under the uh, uh, Peron government, as well as any of the so-called African warlord government. If you notice, there's always a revolution, and then maybe five to ten years after the revolution, the people who are basically taking over are basically practicing a a purging situation when they reestablish whatever government they're in. And that purging is to get rid of all of the intellectuals and people who understand how the government and how everything was prior to them coming into power, after which then they create a intelligence service or secret police that then goes to get everybody else and basically force the people into submission. This form of of political intrigue and social control was was perfected during the so called uh uh Hoover and slash um let's say between the years of uh forty five and sixty five. They basically created all of that. All of that led into what we now today know as the MK programs. So all of these intelligence things are really based upon that. So when we look at the tactics of these uh, police officers and so forth and so have you, the whole aspect of them being able to um, isolate different people for arrest, you know what I mean, within the crowd and then taking certain pictures of those people and then the types of beatings and stuff that they give, uh, hurting people after they subdue them, that is all a form of showing the power of the state, well, power of the state, but the state in this, that they're representing is not New York state, they're talking about the super state that's basically over everything and everybody. So this is the agenda of foreign policy in the post-millennial world. You understand? So this uh, protest situation that kind of sprung up on Wall Street 
is the same type of uh, internet color revolution that they spawned in Egypt and everywhere else. It's just that over here, the first aspect of that that jumped off was those people in Wisconsin when the government was trying to come in and break up their union. All labor unions in the United States initially um, that were founded after the Civil War were labor unions that were associated with uh, white supremacist organizations such as the Knights of Pythias or the uh, the uh, Whigs or the so-called um, compassionate conservatives, neoconservatives. All a neoconservative is is really a national socialist. And a national socialist is basically somebody who is a, is a baby fascist. And fascists and Nazis, national socialist fascists are all Nazis. All of that is a downplay from Nazi ideology. Because, remember, the premise of this so-called world made in their image is them being the dominant, but them being the quote-unquote white male. Yet the white male is the predominant aspect of possession and spiritual and, and uh, material abduction of beings, entities, planets, whatever. So they use the idea of the so-called white man or or white man's world as the impetus for them to, quote-unquote, civilize the world, you see? So everything is based on a pathology. So like I said, in their perspective, war cannot exist. Peace cannot exist without war. So if there was a war where there was no war, there would be no peace to them. This is how they rationalize their agenda. Therefore, war is a necessary component of peacekeeping. You see, it's a it's a maladaptive form of logic based on a form of social Darwinism that really is a form of social cannibalism. Because once the government gets to the type of government that we have now, it's basically eating itself. It's become an Ouroboros, a snake eating its own tail, you know what I'm saying? Or a wag the dog situation where where either the tail is wagging the dog or the dog is wagging the tail. We don't know. So specifically speaking, like I said, this whole New York thing, the whole ride I was talking to my brother, Saga about it. He was talking about the rise of shootings and killings in neighborhoods, in some of the neighborhoods or the neighborhood that we lived in prior to us moving down here. And the funny thing is that neighborhood in question he's talking about is always full of police. You know what I'm saying? So to have six people shot within 20 minutes in one specific area, knowing that all these areas are totally policed and people by cops, it makes me feel that a lot of these shootings or some of these shootings may not be actually by the people. These may actually be uh, death squad brigades, Blackwater brigades that uh, the police or aspect of the police intelligence is using to shoot people and then blame it on uh, the people shooting themselves, which then requires the people to want more police, you see, and eventually the neighborhood becomes a demilitarized zone, which is essentially what they want, you see. And this is the model for all of the United States, for all of the United States to to come out. You know what I'm saying? This is them seeking to pop off this race war regardless of who or what. But when we say them or the proverbial they or who is that, you know, who specifically is that? Well, we're talking about corporations specifically. But even when we talk about corporations, are we talking about all corporations? Is the humor down with it? Is 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 you know neat, uh, Nikon cameras like like everybody like even the guys that make post-its and paper clips like they're down with it too. Their corporation are they down with it? Well, once it was given, once the United States corporation, federal government was given the opposition or the position to create something, that something could then be owned by them. But prior to a certain time in the United States, corporations 
were not seen as citizens or could not exist on the the uh, landmass due to how we had it hooked up with the law. But once a certain section of us began to become more lax in our trading with those newly raised up uh, people and those Moors or, or original people who decided to break away and support more, uh, let's say, lighter-skinned uh, Caucasian-fueled agendas, this is when they became bound. But remember, there was a great war between what they call the ancients and the moderns. And this war is still going on. But the impetus of the war was who was going to be allowed to be raised up through masonry, through what they refer to as Freemasonry itself. So that means that most of the countries that were founded after, prior, and during the war between the ancients and the ancients and modern, were all bonded masonically. You see what I'm saying? More so, more so than than just through matters of state. And, and nationhood, because at the time, states and nations didn't exist. There was only countries, king, kingdoms, and dominion. Or excuse me, uh, empires, kingdoms, and dominion. So, therefore, anybody or anything that was seeking to get power, the only aspect to show power was how much land you could transverse or occupy, given a certain time, given a certain time. But there was been ancestral laws that we have laid in, such as in the codes of Hammurabi, that you read where we gave specific laws of how to deal with the Neanderthal with commerce. And one of those main laws was that a free man or free woman could not actively be on the same level as someone who was genetically altered. This can be seen in the epics of the Ramayana uh, dynasty, when you read about them in the Bhagavad Gita, as well as the um, the uh, Chronicles of Minerta. And when you read about this, it was a certain laws that had to be implemented if you chose to upgrade these beings into a physical uh, being of equality which is why it took so long for them to get there. But once certain aspects of our community decided to take on that burden, that responsibility, they became the ones who had to work with them in perpetuity, which is why you have certain aspects of our culture who feel that they cannot come up without the inclusion of other races into what it is they're doing. And then you have certain individuals who are on the opposite. Like the only way we can have anything for ourselves as a people, not a race, but as a people, would be to have something in which we create again for ourselves. Yet this view is not shared by all due to the fact that we live in what they call the great melting pot in which everybody is burned and seared into merging together into some form of cohesive soup that everybody's supposed to eat out of and feel full the same way. It's not happening. It could never happen like that because all of us are not created equal. <clears throat> we are all equal in the eyes of the creator <clears throat> in the sense that we're all made physical out of the, the breath of the dust of the earth. At the same time, though, <clears throat> that carbon has a divinity attached to it that can be attuned based upon how one raises their own frequency or chooses to raise their own frequency. Therefore, everybody that got melanin is not going to use their melanin like everybody else because certain people are going to use it for the base materials or the base matter of it. And some people feel that it's a burden. Whatever your relationship with it is reflective of your relationship with your spirituality, you see? Because one is evidence of the other. Ask a real Kabbalist. Ask Madonna. 
she called herself a Kabbalah, so I'm just using her as an example of someone we all know who allegedly is in this cult who seems to have a lot of money because of it. Ask her in terms of the, in terms of the incarnation of Malkuth, of the intent in terms of Malkuth, what color it manifests as when it comes into the kingdom. She's going to tell you. Black. But if that's the case, then how come all of the Kabbalists in the center, when they go there, they all be rejected in all white? What's up with that? These red books, the Ike books, the Zachariah Sitchin books, the Maxwell books, the Tex Mar books, the Peter Mar, the Peter Mar books, the all of these Preston Nichols, all these different books about all of these guys. And they all talk about or mention the albino brother, the great white albino brotherhood. What is that? Right? What is that? And what does that have to do with me? And if you're supposed to be giving knowledge freely to everybody, how is it that you can give this knowledge, but then you're still saying that you're down with it? Great white Aryan brotherhood sounds like the KKK to me. <laughs> Yet, David Ike and a couple of other them claim membership to it. So if that's the case, then what is he doing talking to Frito Musqua? What's the relationship with that? Why is it, and how is it that you have a situation now in Libya where now they are getting their freedom. They're using red, black, and green flags to do it. They're allegedly doing all of this to get rid of Gaddafi, but at the same time, they're killing Africans in mass graves and burning them and shooting them up and all of this right now. Libyan is doing that to Africans. So... The aspect of that, what about that? What does that have to do with the liberation of Libyan people? How is it that they're doing this to African people if they all live in Africa? Because you have intelligence agencies on the ground that are connected to the Anglo-American establishment uh, intelligence clandestine services who are fomenting a ethnic uh, uh, disinformation campaign amongst them too. Where the so-called rebels getting all of the? Where was they getting all of the arms from? Now that you now at the same time they're putting it out there, they're also talking about how they may have to commit foreign troop uh, ground troops. Of course, you got to do that. You can't run no war straight from the air. Eventually, you have to put boots on the ground because that's the only way you're going to be able to secure the territory. So specifically speaking, the foreign policy towards the United States is based upon an occult manifestation of a external, somewhat uh, intangible super state that exists in all of the states at once that came into being prior to the whole 9-11 thing. The whole Sean Bell thing, and looking back on it, was something very interesting in the sense that the day that it happened, him at the wedding, the wedding represents the marriage between the, let's say, absolute and the Briatic world within the Kabbalistic tree of life, meaning the lower Sephiroth towards Malkuth, which is the bottom, which is the manifestation of physical reality, intentions, things, thoughts, creations, whatever. The day that they made that happen happened to coincide with the day in the fall of the Reich in which the Nazi Bell project was moved to Argentina. And that Bell project was used as a form of inter international communication as well as somewhat interstellar communication, which then the fomenters or the creators of that who were then able to come up into the United States went into the telecommunications agency 
and set up a company called Bell Atlantic. If anybody remembers that. Bell Atlantic represented the bell that was being brought over to, like I said, the Atlantic, across the Atlantic Ocean through the whole paperclip rat line thing that they was using, which coincided with the uh, beginning of or the birth tanks of the civil rights movement that was going on in the United States because a lot of the early civil rights movement money was coming from the same people who were sponsoring the Bell Project, who were I.G. Farman, uh, uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, uh, back then, it wasn't Bank of America. It was uh, no, it was Bank of America. Bank of America, Barclays of London, and a couple of others. All of them eventually became the the uh, impetus, of course, behind the whole United Nations thing. But specifically speaking, going back to the Bell thing. Anything we are physical representation of the all father, mother, mother, father, God incarnate, right? On earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, whatever is done to us is symbolically done to it. Therefore, the purpose or the amount of ritual that was enacted by these people is what allowed them on an occult level to achieve such levels of high technological science. So much so that I think that there may be elements. Peace, Saga. That you on me? Peace, you there? Nope. Hey, what's up, homie? Peace, 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 King. Peace to the fans. What's up? Chilling, chilling. A little bit of top feeling. Kind of Ellen. That's what's up. Peace to the fans. Peace to the listeners. Peace to everyone. Glad you could come through, man. Me as well, man. Finally got a little monkey off the back with this whole phone situation. So hopefully this one works out a little bit better. Yeah, we'll see, you know. Because you know how they do. Because that's what we're talking about right now. The whole thing with the bell with the phone. The actual oh, yeah. bell that they were creating was uh, was actually a form of gravitational technology, yet gravitational technology based on them following Einstein is a form of time because gravity and time kind of work together. It takes a certain amount of time for an object to fall out of your hand and hit the floor. Therefore, if you can manipulate gravity, you can manipulate how that object, the the speed at which that object falls, theoretically. Right. So, one aspect of that, I think, was them trying to get some type of propulsion device to get up out of here. But then another aspect, a byproduct of that, probably became the whole thing with the um, with with the uh, time travel shit they were trying to do. Which is why in America, at the same time this is going on, the civil rights movement is basically moving time forward. You see by using the agenda of society has to upgrade itself from its old position of or the position it was in from 1865 all the way up to 1965. See what I'm saying? So on one hand, the bell represents the creation that they're trying to manipulate, and then in real time is us, which is the manifestation of the real bell, moving time forward, distorting gravity, changing things, altering reality in how we are being perceived. So, again, I think it was some sort of ritual or some type of thing going back to him and them working to do that. Because the same people who worked on that project worked on the Manhattan Project. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're talking about that heavy on the History Channel now. In the Ant Project? Yeah. See what I'm saying? 
it's an anniversary thing because they're getting close to the time where all this is about to come out. So what I think is happening is that when they got all of these Nazis out, a lot of them had already had American ties through the KKK, and the KKK was already funded by or had members of it ritualistically in the form of the elite families that had been working with them, you know, through their little plan or whatever. So this is why Prescott Bush can help fund the Nazi Party and at the same time fund uh, the Daily and them in Chicago, you know, and at the same time the Ford Foundation and the, uh, what you call it, uh, Rockefeller Foundation fund the uh, social inquiry groups that eventually go in and create the social service movement based upon what the Black Panthers was doing with the with the food programs and shit with the kids. You know what I mean? Yikes. It's crazy, man. I was also talking about the New York shit you were telling me about. Why don't you let the people know a little bit about that, what you've been seeing out there, being that you've been on the ground. Oh, well... I mean, I know I'm pretty sure listeners that are in the New York area know about it, but uh, for all our other listeners in other states and other countries, for that matter, there's been a rash of shootings and killings in New York City, you know, outside of everything that's going down with the protesting. I mean, this is happening from even before that, I think maybe from mid-August. It started off with... Uh, Second month of Jason. Yep. <laughs> It started off with about uh, 24 shootings in 24 hours. That mm-hmm. was like at the end of August, and then slowly but surely since then, it's been about a shooting or so every other day, you know, right. culminating in like uh, three shootings last week. I believe two where uh, kid, uh, the two kids uh, died. And there was also other shootings besides that. Like, I'm not even getting into the one where a little two-year-old girl got killed. Uh, the feud mm-hmm. in, 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 in the Harlem area, you know, the Manhattan area, if anybody familiar with Harlem, where there's, like, uh, project wars up there where people who live in one project can't get along with people who live in another project. A young female got killed up there. She was, like, you know, a rising star on a basketball team and, you know, Perspective mm-hmm. to go to a uh, you know big Division One college for you know her, mm-hmm. her, her basketball talents and you know they she's the lend bias of this generation exactly mm-hmm. you know so they took her out mm-hmm. and then you know uh, a revenge killing that happened you know behind that to some other guys that lived in another project you know across the street or you know right now you know I mean, you know people know in New York City mm-hmm. you know how the projects are where you know mm-hmm. projects are basically like across the street. Housing development for those who may not be familiar with it. I know we call them projects, mm-hmm. but other places, mm-hmm. you know, public housing or whatever. And um, yeah, so that's basically what's what's really been going down. And apparently, you know, the figures that you know Mayor Bloomberg is putting out is that you know, crime is down in New York City. Mhm. Mhm. Yet. Crime is down, but killings is up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they're using mm-hmm. different metrics, you know. <laughs> using different exactly. metrics. Using that white people math. <laughs> mm-hmm. That fudgy finger math. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what's been going down and, you know, so crazy. Um, today I was down in the Wall Street area and, you know, I seen the uh the protests and everything that's going down down there. And you know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's something to you know, it's something to behold, it's something to see. You know, regardless mm-hmm. of the things, the powers that be and the different types of things that's controlling it, but just to actually see, you know, people mobilized in that in that form, mm-hmm. you know. Stand up for something. I wouldn't, exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't chill down there for too long if you if you want to mm-hmm. go and, you know, behold it with your own eyes. I wouldn't, you know, stay or stick around too long, especially if, you know, you're blessed to have some melanin. But, yeah. You get a chance just to check. And you gonna stand out because they don't because they know that you ain't supposed to know about that shit. So if you up there, you one of these niggas, one of these YouTube niggas. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want to see none of the superhero family gripped up on it. You know what I'm saying? Was it from the start? Exactly. You don't want to see that. You know, and unfortunately, they created a situation where this is 
the only means that people can actually do. Because from here, you know, it's got to be taken up a notch. You know, voting, you know, that's not really going to, you know, do anything. Like, it's beyond that. And what's really going on is that everybody who's in the political know understands that. Yet, they are baffled at the people's apprehension to move. You see what I'm saying? Because the people, again, have been placed under this whole program. And so all of these revenge killings and all of that, all of that is the same shit they're doing in Kabul or, you know, Kyrgyzstan or or with the ethnic, you know, with the ethnic Kurds and the, and the, and the Shiites, you know what I mean, in Iraq. They're using the same program. And it's always the people in the ghetto first that they work this on. So, unfortunately, due to the trickle-down theory, people don't realize it until it's trickled down in their head. Yeah. You know? So, I don't, I don't really see, you know, as now the intelligence agencies is in full control of the police. This is why they're so now ultra-aggressive. Because now, again, CIA is not, all of that is not... All of those alphabet gangs is connected at the hierarchy with this existential Nazi state that's puppeteering all of these other states under them. It's the unspoken state. It's the one that everybody that is fomenting the racial strife throughout the world. It's them. Unfortunately, they have a lot of good tech (laughs) based upon that. And because all of the governments in the United States, as well as in the world, post-World War II governments, or took pieces of that shit and tried to get one up on the other person, you know what I mean? They're all complicit because there's patents in all of them being to these people. And because these people had already been running through the bank, they understood once I got the bank system running, it's a wrap. Which is also why it was more, the civil rights movement was more of a racial centered organized movement as opposed to a financially centered organized movement because if the civil rights was being used see the race thing took away the fact that you was disenfranchised to be financially so the more I focused on the race the more they could still fuck us over in terms of the the uh, money you know what I'm saying and once we realized that it was too late so niggas do what niggas always do and they decide, well, can't beat them, join them. <laughs> Started going to Howard, Harvard, <laughs> Yale. You know what I mean? Let me let me put on a suit. Let me you know squeeze my butt tight. Let me talk, take the bass out of my voice. Let me you know be the only black person in this room with these guys. And this way I can come up. You know, but no white man comes out and tells you you can't get the job because of your hair. White people ain't that stupid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Therefore, you're talking about an implication. So unless they're giving this to you in writing based upon appearance, blah, 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 then if you are compelled to cut your hair just to keep them from saying something, that's on you. That's not on them. Because they're not telling you that you got to do that. Because mm-hmm. I've worked jobs where they'll have people there with spikes in their hair, purple hair, Spikes mm-hmm. in the in the earrings and all that. Working with kids. Mhm. Spikes in the tongue. Spikes in the in the forehead. <laughs> Tattoos in the face. Like what? And it's all good because this is Becky from Wisconsin, and now she's living in Best Side. You know what I mean? On the block that I moved or moved, you know, may have bought weed on or moved off of back in the days and shit. She moved it on there now because it's you know, it's now. Uh, uh, what do they call it now? It's not no Stan Africans. Don't they have another name for it now? Where, where? I hope not. <laughs> like Brooklyn, like Brooklyn North or some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because what's happening is that the real estate agents are working with these organizations, these school organizations, based upon the college entrance exam guidance counselors trying to find places in the hood for these guys to go after they get out of school to basically get some experience in art or whatever, and they say, okay, well, we want to get this neighborhood. So once they know, okay, well, we want this, these guys only have this amount of money, what we're going to do is gentrify that sky and then put up the kick up, get all the niggas out, and then put up the price so that way when Becky from Wisconsin comes, 
you know, she's having a Brooklyn experience without having the, the real Brooklyn experience. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? With the niggas. Baby. Right. Right. But then she feels justified because then she goes right around the corner to her band outpost and then she she see a bunch of niggas in there with white girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so she figures it's all good. So you can't yeah, blame her. You can't blame her. Mm-hmm. That's all of these niggas that, that's with all these white girls that she's looking at and is like, yo, what's going on? Sure. And I know, or we know, because we was there. I remember the day when all of the U-Haul trucks came down, uh, what was what's that, Flatbush Avenue, going up towards uh, uh, Cranton Hill and shit. And I was sitting in front of Brooklyn Moon with the with the owner of Brooklyn Moon. We was just watching these things. They just all it was like it was like it was timed. Mhm. opening game closing. Right after that, my father lost. Had to give up his crib, and everybody else I knew in the neighborhood. Spike Lee had to go. Even Spike Lee had to go. <laughs> he got rid of that nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said no, son. You out too. So we could bring in Robert De Niro, Robert right Leffert, thing. and the Sundance. You see what I'm saying? Not and Jay Z, and they're gonna do the same thing with this cracker when he come in there to 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 for the ritual to commence the stadium when he do the three shows. You know what I mean? Me, myself, and I. You know, he gonna get up in there and do the show. All the black people gonna go and support him because they like his music, and then they gonna feel justified kicking even more of them niggas out. And he, again, it ain't them. He volunteering for that. To the point you told me, he was, they asked him, they said, okay, so are you going to buy a crib in Brooklyn? He's like, ah, the market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I looked around the other day at all the books and stuff that I got, and I was thinking about it. It was like, it's a damn shame that the only, like, really strong, revering black men, you know what I mean, that I could, like, look at, tell my son, hey, this is who you need to look up to, this is who it is, that, you know, other than certain people I know, are all dead. Marcus Garley, Khalid Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, Farah Law, you know what I'm saying, No Jali, you know, So Deuce, Chief Deuce Muhammad, Pascal Bell Randolph, Harriet Tubman, all these people are dead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, we're always, so it's like, I'm we're, say we're bit, right. Who am I going to say, Obama? <laughs> Jesse Jackson? <laughs> you know what I mean? Kanye? Like, what? Who? With everybody that's out, I would have to look and say, okay, well, he's cool, but he's cool, but. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You could like this about him, but. It's always a disclaimer. You got to have now. It wasn't like that at one time, man. And that's not all the white man's fault, yo. We bear a lot of responsibility in that. Because we don't revere each other while we're here. And again, I'm not talking about all of us. I'm talking about those who do that. I'm not talking about all black people. I'm talking about the black people who do that. I'm not talking about all white people. I'm talking about the white people who do that. Just so everybody knows. Because people find things to stop them from listening to what you're really saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they would be waiting. Okay, he's gonna, okay, great. Now, great. I don't have to listen to him no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's kind of fucked up. Yeah, they're all dead, bro. And the farther back you go, the more dead they are. So what makes them alive is the fact that we know that they're in us. And what makes it even what makes them active though is to know how they interact with us, where they are in us, how to manifest them out of us. That's why we such a threat with no guns and nothing. Because we have the ability to be the living canopic jaw and activate that within us and everybody else. Yet, 
the glory days of what we were is, is done. It's about what we're going to be. And as the whole existence is in this flux now, this is the time when these beings are going to work to try to usurp people's own faith in the creator, in themselves, in everything that is beautiful about reality, and usurp that to the ends of the beast. So the more we need to become more understanding of our inner space, the more the external reality creates outer things for us to pay more attention to, which then throws off the inner equilibrium that we're seeking to establish, the inner temple, the inner upper room, you know, the the inner firehouse, the inner pyramid, the inner Merkaba. We've been talking how we've been talking about we gotta be fifty percent physical, fifty percent non physical the show. Why these niggas come out with a what we call fifty fifty? You know what I'm saying? It's not coincidence. Especially right now. Nah. You can be thinking about Especially something. Especially right now, man. They pop up right on TV. You're like, oh, wow. Right? It's almost like the TV is is anticipating or reflecting what it is you're thinking about nowadays. Like, you'll be thinking about something or talking about something, turn the channel, and they'll either say what you said or repeat what you said or be in the vein of something you was building on or thinking about or may have thought about before. You know what I mean? So now I'll be testing shit. I'll be like, okay, I want to see uh, Fight Club. <laughs> you know what I mean? When y'all going to put that on. But I'm not pro, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying this in my mind and seeing how long it takes for it to manifest on the television. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm testing myself like that. Like, let me see if let me see if that'll work. Cause shit will happen when I'm not even really doing a nod to it like that. So let me see if I actively put energy into it that can happen. She's like Google. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Exactly like Where Google. Google come, though? This is that black hole technology we were talking about in Black Nazis. That interspontaneous technology that activates itself upon self-realization. So the minute you think this thought, it manifests on a computer. You know? But now, being that they want to create these three-dimensional computers, you see what I'm saying? It then becomes holographic. But... We are moving into a phase in which zero point energy will become the dominant phase of uh, magnetic energy, in which then holo- holographic images won't be able to sustain a lot of the lust that they used to. Because we're moving into a point where everything real is going to be manifested. And in this reality, everything real is the things that you can't touch. You know what I'm saying? all in tune with the, the three days of darkness spoken about in the Baktun of the so, so-called Mayan, which is really the Tomoankan calendar that they're so obsessed with, which is why they want to get as many niggas, they want to sell as many guns to them Mexicans as possible so that way they can kill as many Mexicans and other people as possible so that way they can hopefully get down there and get to one of them temples where they feel that maybe they will be able to receive some sort of, they will be able to receive something that's supposed to be for us. So they kidnap all of these Mexican boys through the CIA sex traffic and the Mormon uh, sex traffic rings and uh, mind control them, rape them, and then turn them into gang members, but then make sure all of the analysts and the handlers that do it to them are black men or black women. So then that way they put them put them back in the hood, mind wiped, but with this burning hatred for original people, and then put them into MS-13. Just like, speaking of Mayor Doomberg, there's a big thing going on where this devil, and that's what he is, he's a devil who happens to be Jewish, who decided to 
pass a pedophile uh, over to a rabbinical court as opposed to a judicial court, meaning that there is a ceremony that certain set bonds and certain sects of certain Hasidic and so-called Orthodox Khazarian, Khazarian Jewry adherence practice, which is a specific type of bris in which the moil or the muhar grabs after the consecrated ritual, takes the penis, force and puts it in his mouth and bites the foreskin off, of which then he sucks the blood out of the tip of the penis of the baby. And this is a time-honored practice of Khazaria. This was not a practice of the Hebidu, Moorish people, you understand, us, the original people, but this is what they chose to do as a means of creating themselves into a race through inbreeding and molestation and stuff like that. So this guy did this to a lot of kids, but what he didn't tell the parents in them was that he had herpes, and he passed his herpes onto the children, and some of them died. Wow. He happened to be also the him and a, his cohorts, because once they take the foreskin out of their mouth, they pass it on to the other 13 or 12 priests that are around, and they all suck on it too. You understand? So this was brought to him by the mother of one of the kids at the pain of death because they have a a secret police force for themselves in which a lot of the women who are Jewish in that community, just like Mormon women, just like other so-called white women who are down for their cause or whatever, are being raped and tortured and beat up or whatever by their husbands. But under the uh, Jewish law, rabbinical law, they got to go to the rabbi with that. And the rabbi always tell them, go back to your husband, you see, which then makes these people more and more predatory, which then leads them to go have sex with prostitutes and other shit like that, unprotected or whatever, because this is all part of their ritual. Their ritual as as parasites is to draw genetic material from different sources. You know what I'm saying? And then bring it home. This is what they've been doing from when they was not even conscious. Read the 13th tribe by Arthur Kosler, you know, read the 12 secrets of the caucus by S.R. Bay, you know, read the Iceman Inheritance by, by Michael Bradley, you know, read the Origins of Humanity by Churchwood, you know, read the ISIS papers by Francis Press Wilson. <laughs> it's a fact. The other day, son, they had a party in my complex, so we went down, and there was this guy I know, and he's mad cool, and he's a white guy, and he kept it real with me, son, but, you know, he's kind of drunk, but he kept it real. He was like, yo, the biggest issue with white men is that, you know, you guys' penises are bigger than ours. That's it. <laughs> he said, that's our biggest fear, son. That makes us very think, and the fact that you guys are very, very angry. He said, see, you guys are angry, but we're violent. Because, mm. see, I talk to white The same way we talk is the way that I talk to people. Like, I don't, this is not just a thing. This is how we, we in order to, for us to get to where you got to be real. So the fact that, you know, you can keep it real, white people want to tell you how, how crazy some of the shit they be feeling and going through is. They want to tell you. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they know if they tell you, they, 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 they dig is up. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, you know, our people are so, you know, inundated with Western society and money. It's money, really, because we still equate Caucasian people as money. That's our shit we got to get over. We look at them as a need to come up. <laughs> That's not, you know, and they look at us the same way, but they are looking at it as in a long-term genetic level. You see what I'm saying? We're looking at it in a short-term financial situation and, and superficial hair shit. Like black people don't don't produce certain type of hair. 
but regards to whatever it is, I'm saying that this is what went down. And this guy, the mayor of New York, referred it to a rabbinical court because he is down with them. You see? And these people don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Torah. <laughs> you know? They believe in some whole other shit. However, again, they have their own community where they could police themselves and nobody can tell them nothing because they got enough money to do what they want. And they're willing to be slaves to do that. And so they dress in black and white because all of them are undertakers. All these Wall Street people that you see walking through in them suits, those are undertakers. There's more students that are graduating colleges now are getting into finance, scientists getting into finance, fashion industry. Fashionistas getting into finance. Everybody getting into finance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or or becoming lawyers, which is worse. Maybe look like Hitman to me. Like the Hitman from the game with the forehead and all that. Exactly. Hitman. Hit with the burn in it. Yep. Doing all that little rituals and all of that. And they're bonded through the homosexual rights that you go through when you come up. Uh, New York Times, the New York Times and Newsweek did an article, Gay Wall Street. You can go online, Google it, read it yourself. These white people talk about that they only deal with, but they don't deal with the regular gay people. They're only dealing with you if you want it like that. And if they do help other gay people, they help them on the low under a different dummy company or something else because they don't want to be associated with them like that because they're trying to come up in the real homosexual elite, which is the whole uh, elite ritual sacrifice thing. To sip it, you know. And that's what I think. I think the alien thing, a lot of the stuff that's going down, even with the whole external, like, hardcore, like, physical alien you could touch thing is the G, I think. I think the real stuff is the subatomic two-dimensional stuff that they've been interfacing with and receiving through radio transmission and been beaming into people through TV and stuff like that, through ideas, through concepts, you know? That's the influence. That's advertising. And where did that come from? Edward Bernays. And who was he? Sigmund Freud's cousin. And who was Sigmund Freud? The founder of Modern Western Psychology, a.k.a. Mind Control Program. That's why they like him, because he was a Nazi programmer. <laughs> you understand? Like, everybody thinks the Nazis started in the 30s. Everybody thinks they started in the 30s. Like, no, nigga, these niggas started when they was coming into South Africa, even before then. You know what I mean? You know? got these black people involved in themselves and stuff, they don't even understand. They don't even have no idea of what it is they're doing, involving themselves in rituals and shit and, and having babies all types of crazy ways. You don't even, you don't even know. You don't even know. You just read some, some Hindu guys doing it like this, but this Hindu guy is into a system called Agora. <laughs> and if you are not into that, you, you may not want to fuck with it like that. <laughs> you know? Not every... Not, not every not every person, just because they're smiling and they're nice, is there with a with a pleasant intent. You got to look where they are in your chart in the house of secret enemies. I was building with a great brother today, uh, Brother Evan Reese, and he was talking to me, really conversing about that and looking in where your house of secret enemies, where, where your enemies are. Some people's enemies are just people they meet and just get into it with. Some people's enemies, like me, my enemies always turn out, come from friends. And it usually manifests from situations in which I don't comply into something that they may want me to be a part of due to my 10th, 11th, 12th, and 8th house. Makes sense. You see? Yet, it's when you try to hold on to relationships that are not functioning properly is when you find yourself at a detriment to yourself and you wind up getting caught up. You know, in which we all get exploited in that. Hmm. 
crazy, man. You know? Now, um, uh, speaking of this, like the uh, the charts and everything like that, how does one go about finding that stuff out? I mean, I know you're pretty sure you know saying yourself what a queen may be versed in that, but like you know, like personally, me, like personally, I I don't know about that type of stuff. Like the person could reach out to you and. Basically, uh, have a reading done, and you know, what I'm saying I'm pretty sure there's certain types of guidelines that mm-hmm. that go through with that. Mhm. Cool. She was saying in terms of like if somebody was to want to get a reading, what they should look out for. Yeah, or like if they want to get a reading, they reach out to me. Oh yeah, holler at me, okay. man. Um, how to help? You actually you actually break that part down. Like I never. I never really deal with you on that part. Yeah, so. it's important because um, in reading, in whatever you do, some people use bones, some people use cards, some people use hands, some people use feet, eyelash, whatever. Whatever it is, just because it may seem odd, you know, it doesn't mean that the person's a charlatan, you know. What it means is that they may be attuned into a certain frequency of the body that allows them to entune and intuit a certain degree of information. That's really all it is. It's how the light bounces off of you or how the medium or viewer sees that light. And in that light, it's not like you see a bunch of, well, at least for me, it's not like you see a bunch of, like, quick images in your mind like the movies. It's more like a knowing of something. And... What makes you sensitive to that is your ability to trust in it and know that it's real. You see what I'm saying? More than trying always to interpret it, interpret what you're seeing. When you try to interpret what it is you're seeing, that's when you get screwed up. Because what you're seeing is not really for you. It's for the person who is who you're reading. So if you get a reading from people in cards, you want to make sure that they never read from the bottom of from the t- uh, bottom of the deck on it. So make sure they pull off the top. Just like in cards, gambling. Because card games and cards, the green, the cups, and all of that, all of that corresponds to tower cards. You can use, uh, I know a uh, Madrina out here that uses regular playing cards as reading cards. And she's accurate. You know? And the thing about it, too, is that a lot of it is allowing, leaving yourself open for the possibility. So it's not so much what the reader is telling you. It's more about how these things already correlate, coalesce to where you are. So also to be astute with it, some readers, the good ones, you don't always have to give them the question, you know, I used to need the question when I first started, you know. But the more I began to have faith in what I was understanding, allowing myself to be open to, you see, which is the understanding of this as an ancient practice, not as a means, let's say, to make money, you see. I could then get better and get to the point enough where they, they rewarded the ancestor within me that may have been into that and did that through me would allow reward to come in the form of people respecting me enough to give me compensation for it. You see what I'm saying? As opposed to Miss Cleo with a <laughs> an 800 number. You know what I'm saying? Where you hollering at her, this shit, this, she's not, don't even know you. So it's the, it's, it's really what you're, what you allow yourself to be open to, you know? Yet, it's also about the person when they get in the reading, how they feel, how comfortable they feel in the procedure. You know what I'm saying? Some readers are very abrasive, you know, and some readers use, uh, you never want to get a reader that's really into good and bad. Don't do this, don't do that, or or you can't, or whatever. See, that means that that person is an extremist in their own life. So you need to 
again, be as righteous as you need to be and as callous as you need to be to be truly balanced. You know what I mean? So it's in there too. So um, anybody wants to holler at me about that, please holler at me at House of L at hotmail.com. Uh, you could also go to our website, www.ICNDuketeers.com. We have a, I did a join on it. You can see a clip of it on YouTube called uh, Dark Matter Magician's Guide to the Rota, which is the tarot. Uh, it's pretty cool. But that's a good question because a lot of people will then use the negative readers or the ones who use the power that they have to influence to see how much they can get somebody to do. Some readers hate people. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you some shit like cut your hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you just out there like, <laughs> you know, and they tell you some other shit. And then, and then you know, pretty soon you become their slave. You know? A good reader is one that will empower you. You know what I mean? To seek it for yourself. Just like a good anybody. Anybody that's that's urging you that you can do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you you can do it, whatever it is. It's just that you gotta take into parameters of who and what environment you're around and what you're dealing with. But a lot of people don't want it you don't want you to do it. They don't want you to be successful. You there, Saga? You got cut off. Yeah, I think you got cut off, y'all. Go check it out. Hello? Kill Saga, you there? Yo. Yeah. Yeah, you know how to do it. Yeah, you want. Yeah, it's me on some bullshit. It took me up. I called back and it was like, there's no show schedule. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they do, son. You know what they're doing. Oh, man. <laughs> Being themselves. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I need to be told not to be told. Yeah, it's an endurance test, man. Yeah. You gotta have a lot of dexterity to a lot of this shit. Yeah. You know, they just went through another thing where they had to pass another bill to keep it going again. I mean, they're gonna have to pass another one at the end of Jason in November. You know, but November's gonna be the primary when they gotta choose a, a Republican, and they don't have nobody to run against this thing but the black dude. That scares the hell out of them because it means that maybe the only way they can get rid of this nigga is to put another nigga in there. Mm-hmm. So he can go through Abel. Yeah, right. And they'll get this cane to slay Abel, exactly. Which And don't be surprised if you see, like, little little like Wall Street Journal um, uh, cartoons where you see this depicted. Because this is all ritual, man. And, again, he's a dark-skinned black man. So, they, so now if they turn it up a notch, they're going to get the knowledge feed to get in the office and then go hammer on everybody. It's, it's really going to be crazy. Because if they get a dark-skinned nigga like that in the office, they're definitely going to get these crying people crazy. But see, what it is, too, is that not everybody is ready to kill to be a leader. A lot of these niggas ain't ready to kill people. But from the beginning of this... I'm not trying to kill nobody. Right, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the people in that arena. I know, but you got to be clear because this is still, you know, the NSA network <laughs> that we on, really. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be clear for these niggas because they want to go hand with anybody that's, you know, keeping it real. So in them not being able to do that from the beginning of this Republican term of these people being in office, they have... They have created a, a system where they've been killing senators and congressmen wholesale. Look, look back from the beginning of of January, and type in in the search engine um, senators and congress U.S. senators and congressmen 
senators or congressmen uh, found uh, slain or, or died in mysterious circumstances. You know what I'm saying? So they do. They were doing this as a means to to curtail Republican votes to be able to stimulate them into voting for the Tea Party reactionists. Uh, recently, no. Uh, oh, I'm talking. Uh, see somebody in the chat room that says, "I see. Have you seen?" The Black Power Mixtape 1967-1975 documentary. I may have seen it, but I may not have known that that was the name of it, you know. Um, they they um have different different aspects. And they create a, a aspect where now, due to the so-called post-racial America, they have uh, fostered an agenda that race is not an issue. Yet, the majority of the people getting killed behind a lot of this racism shit are dark-skinned people. Mm -hmm. Yet, because they're also working to reduce the carbon footprint, this is all seen as an aspect of Agenda 21, which is the Kyoto Protocol, which goes into the depopulation, which leads you to the Atlanta Guidestone. This is all part of their agenda to reduce the carbon footprint, a.k.a. the black footprint of as many people as possible, many of us as possible. We read this in the 80s under Global 2000 and Rex 84 and all that other crap that they um, were uh, facilitating to us during the Reagan era. All of that was this hypothetical reasoning to see if given to us, the populace, we would be able to manifest the energy that could create the impetus in them to be able to create technology to, to fulfill the program. They don't do anything based upon their own initiative. They, their initiative is based on our output. Therefore, our initiative then is always stunted, where, whereby the necessary capacities that exist within society to move us up are locked in place due to our own self-deprivation. Not necessarily as an entire people, though. As a people with an idea that they are a group of people. You know what I'm saying? Like a group of original people who look at themselves as black, who may not look at themselves as original but look at themselves as descent from a certain certain phenotype, a.k.a. slave. So if they can make you believe you came from a slave, they can make you believe that you evolved from the monkey. You see what I'm saying? It's a downward spiral depending on what perspective of yourself you occupy and what aspect of yourself you follow to the fruition. Somewhere along the line, we debunked the slave program and moved into an alternate reality in which we all share a composite reality where we all are physical representations of a mathematical anomaly called the tetrahedral redundancy, i.e., the Christ aspect always coming back after the last Christ was murdered to be able to bring the message to the people that's being incarnated. So what I'm saying then is that the universal matrix in that aspect, is us. It is the microcosm that affects the macrocosm, and then the macrocosm reflects then the microcosm. Therefore, the microcosm is the singularity. The singularity is the locus corellius, is the little black dot. The little black dot is the duat or the, the, the speck of dust that everything came out of. That is the singularity. That is the locus corellius that exists within the pineal gland. It's the dot within the dot within the dot. And that singularity is all of us got a piece of it. So all of us got a little bit of this black hole in us. So therefore, the universe that we see on the outside is a mirror reflection of a universe that we have come to believe represents modern reality. It is our perception that shapes this. 
That is why they have to influence your perception. If it was really about them controlling everything and controlling you, they wouldn't have to do nothing in secret. they just kick your ass and do everything that they've been doing. They're doing that openly, but at the same time, they still want to look like they're your friend. Because <laughs> they still want you to give them some pussy to be vulgar. That's what it is. They still want you to be find them attractive enough <laughs> to have sex with. <laughs> So they almost want to terrorize you into into being with them. They want to force you into doing business with them. They want to they want to always do that. That's why they force to that. What is what is violence have to do with correction? If it's about correction, they used to call it the Bureau of Prisons. They had to flip it into the corrections because people protested about prison. But recently they flipped it back up into prisons and nobody and because nobody's protesting against the word. They use at least at the time they would use the corrections, they were using it as a means to show that they was trying to practice for rehabilitation. They can have rehabilitation because the purpose of this is to demoralize and destroy the moral fiber of the so called American people, black, white, red, yellow, everybody. And force everybody into a financial blinder situation where they feel that they can be the new white man. So they can shit on the black man and everybody else. That's why everybody comes over here and, and, and disrespects the black man, but then the minute you become a rapper or an NBA player or or, or some or a movie star, someone on T V, then you go all good. But to stay there, you gotta get a Becky or you gotta let these guys touch your booty or something else. It's just the way it is. Try to get Saga back in. I think they kicked him off again. Yeah, man, it's crazy. But if you try one more time, homie, if you can't get back on, we're going to try to um, work it on Friday we come back in. Sorry about that. Yeah, but this is this is how it works, you know what I mean? This is, this is part of it. That's funny. My building just had a fire drill, too, today. That's funny. JPA 100. My, um, they, they have one today. That's interesting. Anybody else had a fire drill today? And, again, I don't want to get anything misconstrued with people and understanding what we're really talking about. This goes beyond the fact that we that you know the majority is that the so called people are using all people. Because what they want to do, I think, too, is get rid of as much of us as possible, and then eventually um, enslave the white people, make them the slaves under them, just to rub it in their face that they didn't help us at the time that they could have. They hate all people. This this has nothing to do with again. However, the Nazis have a specific fixation on us, just due to the fact that they had that. The bulwark of all of these programs that were set in motion, if you want to look them up, um, the list is Operation Paperclip, Operation Northwood, Operation MK Ultra, Operation MK Naomi, Operation Phoenix, Operation Columbus, Operation Zapata, Operation Green Star, Operation Galileo, Operation Spellbinder, Operation Blue Bean, Operation Southern Cross, Operation Medigo, Megiddo, Operation Last Dance, and then Operation High Jump. That's the one that initiated the tech war that's been going on ever since then. Because that's the one where they had to go up to Antarctica and get the business because a lot of the Nazis had set up a shop up there. And when they went up there, the technology was so heavy that they wound up coming back 
beat up and broke. And allegedly, you know, this can this is connected to them on the moon, on the dark side of the moon, if they have all of these bases and stuff. That at least they want to put in the psyche of the people in a form of a movie they're going to come out with in a little while called Iron Sky about Nazis coming back from the moon attacking the world now. Taking over everything back into Hitler. That's why when you watch the movie Contact, when they got the first alien transmission, it came back in the Hitler uh, image, showing you that the Nazis were the ones who were most successful at spreading their message of hate throughout the universe. So at least that's what they want to put in your mind that they can do. So they want to make you believe that the technology that they've been using, or they was able to use in the form of the Bell and a lot of the other anti gravity stuff they were doing. Um, they want to make you believe that they got that directly from these aliens when a lot of that was left over technology, like I said, by our ancestors. That if us putting in a room to know how to work it, could do it. Because they'll build the shit and they don't even know how it works. The analogous experiment in the United States to the Bell Project was the Manhattan Project and eventually became the Philadelphia Project that led to uh, their working to try to manipulate time and time and stuff. But the manipulation of time comes through the manipulation of gravity, you see. But they can't do it because they haven't been able to sustain something that can hold gravity in that way. The center of all gravity in this universe is the black woman because it's out of her womb that represents the grand womb of the universe what they call the great canopy. But when I say the black woman, I'm talking about any original woman who chooses to accept the fact that she is the archetype of the feminine intuitiveness of the creator. Not every woman is ready to live up to that title because that means that you can't put yourself in a certain position. Just like not every man is ready to live up to the title of being that supreme being in his own universe. Because sovereignty also means going over to say no to shit. And a lot of us don't know how to do that. A lot of us are still suffering from things like peer pressure because we see a bunch of other people on that because we want somebody to like us or whatever in this group or whatever. We'll be down with the group or whatever. Now is the time to start thinking for yourself and looking where you sit and bring your attention to. If this person don't see you for who you are, then you're dealing with a person for real. You're not dealing with a being. So again, you're dealing with we're dealing with an enemy that cloned their first baby in 1927 in Germany, then they cloned the second one at MIT in 1963. This is fact. They had Appalachian clone factories also in China that was training facilities for a group of the army intelligence called the First Earth Battalion that they refer to now as in the movie The Men Who You Can Watch Now in the comic version in the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats. They became the preliminary force that made up what is now known as the Wackenhut SS. Again, there's that word, SS again. These are the guys who guard Area 51. So basically, they're telling you that the SS <laughs> guards Area 51. But if I say that Nazis is running the government, everybody's like, wow, don't you notice that all presidents and these, even the United States president, all these presidents seem like they all are on the same level. None of them really seem individual no more. None of them really seem like they got their own thing, except Gaddafi. <laughs> See what I'm saying? To the knowledge, man. Look at the movie Limitless. Go to the part where he just got, he was coming off the drug, and he's in the in the meeting with Robert De Niro, and they give him the thing, and he takes the drug, and he looks at the plan and says, well, in order to make this work, you got to get rid of Libya. What are you going to do about Libya? And then three months later, they go and invade Libya. But then look, then, that's on an international level. Look on a basic national level. Where are we as a people economically? Where are we as a people socially in a community? We're divided. Everybody, and we're divided based on spirituality. And to some degree, cast. 
because being that some of us are amalgamated and some of us do come from, let's say, biracial situations, a lot of us are dealing with that too and don't want to come to grips with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just wish that we could create a forum where everybody could be heard and everybody could just say and be where it is they want to be without the fear of judgment. I don't judge people that eat meat just because I don't. I don't judge nobody except for foul character. So if you so if a person's character seems to be foul to me, then that's not a person I'm going to deal with in the future based upon my entrance into this planet and how people are with me. If one has no people, one cannot be betrayed only by oneself. Sounds so. But guess what? The Jesuits grow up reading Sun Tzu too. And a lot of these Malta, Malta, Niger Jesuits, they, they black too. Took my son's gymnastics today. And there was a little girl in there, beautiful little girl in there, about five years old, with a whole weave in her head, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like with a weave in her head. We need braids, and not hers. So what is that saying psychologically to the child? It's not getting into the mother or the black woman or whatever. What's that saying to the child? Saying to the child, my head's not good unless it's long. You know what I'm saying? That's not cool. White man ain't making her moms do that to her. Her moms or her dad or whoever do that to her. That's her. Superiors want her to appear beautiful or whatever. Or what they perceive that to be, which is long hair. But the long-term esteem issue is not worth the moment of gratification and the esteem of what it does to the child. Just like if you see a child, a little black boy, is walking down the street and he sees old men or older men with their pants down to their behind, then he thinks that that's what he's supposed to do. That makes him look like a man. But that whole thing was spawned in jail, and we know where that leads to. So how is that helping the self-esteem of the boy? Especially when you see other young females then respond to that. It makes you want to emulate that. Because man covets what he sees every day. So all those operations that I led to earlier, you can request the Little Freedom of Information Act form. Um, you can um, send that out and get a request to read those documents. A lot of them be blacked out. But if you read a lot of them together, you get the basic gist of what's going on. And that aside from the foreign political intrigue, there's an underlying force within that that is manipulating things in a certain direction. And it's the same force that's manipulating things now. Some people want to call it the Illuminati, and maybe that then becomes the name of the so-called separate existential state that's running in black men and all of the established states in the quote-unquote open. Everything that the enemy does, he creates a model of. Like the day of 9-11, there was, 50, there was like 20 different models or scenarios running of planes crashing in the building. So, of course, when eventually one crashes into the building, they don't know if it's real or an exercise. 
who was in charge of the, of the, of the, of the stuff that day. It wasn't Bin Laden. He wasn't in charge of none of that. Cheney was in charge of that day. That's why they focus on Bush. What was Bush doing that day? Where was Bush that day? Here's the interview with Bush on that day. All to get away from where this dude, where, where, where was he? How come we ain't doing a story on him? Because the bag man is the patsy. Whoever's sitting down talking to you in terms of government is the most stupid. Whoever's on TV that you see every day that seems real intelligent, whatever, they're the most mentally challenged out of everybody. The people you don't see are the intelligent ones. Those are the handlers. Those are the ones that's handling them. The reason why you see Al Sharpton and there's a, then there's another reason why you never see Vernon John or even hear his name. See what I'm saying? They'll talk about slain leaders, but they won't bring up Ron Brown. Because all of these black guys don't have international jurisdiction. The only black people that have international jurisdiction is rappers, which is why they're now federally regulated. Pick up one rap cover, traditional rap album from a label that don't have an FBI sticker on it. The same FBI whose purpose mandate was to what? Destroy the rise, the potential rise of the black messiah. They've created a systematic matrix in which we, the potential coming conquerors of it, we're the only ones that can stop it. We're the only ones because we're the most dejected in the entire planet because we live in the greatest place in the world. It's because this place is a there's a toilet now, don't mean that it was like that when we was in control, so you can't that with the bath water. You can't say that the country is just that the land itself is just black and all of that just because of the government. That's not real. That's going against our ancestors. Our ancestors is the land. So instead of cleaning it up, we bitch about the people that's making it dirty. Instead of making them clean it up, or leaving altogether. They have no problem saying who can come in and who can't. And they are the ones who have no right to do it. Because they are the last ones here. And when I say the last ones here, I mean the last ones who incarnate on the planet, which is why they're the ones in so much in control now. Because as the younger species, they're the ones that have to learn that materialism is not the way to go and that does not trump spiritualism. But they, they feel that they, they cannot achieve that due to the fact that they do not have the uh, carbon molecule pineal function that we do. So at one time, we prayed on them, we used them as pets, and now it is reversed. But now the time has come when all bets is off. When that debt has already been paid. We created the caste system. We didn't create the racial thing. They did that. The only reason why we got to come on the radio now and talk about our greatness and who we are and all this other stuff is because somebody said we aren't that. So regards to who or what, if they win, if they lose, whatever it is, nobody can say that there wasn't certain people out there letting people know what the real was. So in that, A lot of times, messages will be good, but they'll come through dirty vessels. So it's up for us to discern that. And the only way to be able to do that is to go into the spirit realm, which trumps all lie detectors, motion detectors, cameras, everything to whatever. If you know what you're looking for, and if you have faith in what it is 
and trust in what it is you're looking at. If you're looking at it with your eyes, your perspective, what you've been blessed with to contribute. And so in a parasitic society, parasites seek to usurp that divine gift and mass distribute it without paying homage to where they receive it. But see, white folks don't do that. They revere. Like I said, our scholars wind up penniless, you know what I mean, um, broken down in homes, only wheeled out when they want to, when they, when, People are seeking to validate what it is they're currently speaking of. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, you don't ever hear from them or what's up with them or whatever. These Caucasian people lionize their writers, especially the science fiction ones like Arthur C. Clarke, Kirk Vonnegut, Philip K. Dick, H.P. Lovecraft. They get lionized, meaning that they cults form from the books that they write. And people seek to challenge, channel the inner meanings of their writing through the spirit realm. People who can only do it through malicious satanic means. Because sex belongs to the original people. Whereas sat or soot and satan belongs to Western society as its God of choice. So, to take it back, you know what I mean, if we go to what I refer to as the Moritic Masonic calendar, this is a calendar that I've been doing a knowledge to and working on, you have the Babylonian Kemetic Tamawan Khan mystery system that, let's say, lasted from 23 million years to about two million years B.C., and then from there you get the Kabbalistic Dogon Sufic system that starts somewhere around 100 B.C., which is then carried on later into the Gnostic aspects through the Essene orders of the Cathar, Coptic, Celtic, Jewish scientific orders from about 500 B.C. to about 300 A.D., then you get the pre-Islamic sorcery and alchemy, Moorish dominion, starting from about 300 A.D. to about 1000 A.D. Then we'll go up to the Hashemite assassin, Ishmael, 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 Ishmaeli Moors, or Hassan S. Saban Moors, from about three, from about 300 and 12 A.D. to about 980 A.D., then you get the Arcadian, which in America became Cajun, Norman, which in called old Europe is Norman, and then you get the Druid and uh, what became the Albionic Templar, which could be summed up as amalgamated more from about 1118 to about 1307, which then resulted in a resurgence of the Cathar type of Moor that you would see depicted as the Moors dressed in blue in the movie Kingdom of Heaven. Then going into the establishment from the Sufic order of the Rose into the Rosicrucians from about um, 1425 to about 1565, excuse me, 1525, then you get the change-up when the Vatican, through the Moriscos or the Alejandra, excuse me, the Alambrado Society is established, and one of their students became Ignatius Loyola, in which he then went to work for the newly established Vatican that came to power by destroying the black Coptic Cathar and then founded the Society of Jesus through the Jesuit system of the black popes from about 1534 to 1656. So then from there now, operative and speculative masonry goes through a radical war between 1656 to about 1716, of which then 
by 1717, the Mother Lodge of England is then incorporated, after which then in France, the Grand Orient Lodge is consecrated in 1773, which then leads to the so-called Illuminati Agreement or the Illuminati Illuminatus Ordenen, established then in 1776 by Weishaupt. And then from there, you get the fusion of the twin pillar currents of the Brotherhood of Eagles and the Brotherhood of Death, both of these cults emerging out of this periodic history that we have just gone through in the past 15 minutes. We've gone through at least a couple of million years of history, of which then these were broken up into two houses when it was us in control, of which it was the House of Ibelin that, again, you'll see in the movie Kingdom of Heaven, also known as Geblin, which was the northern tribes that consolidated from the unifying aspects of the Moorish dominance of the old European system of the seafaring moors. So this represented those moors from the north side of America all the way up into Alaska and Canada and then over into what is now known as the old world. But everything in the old world is named after the things that was already established here. So Jerusalem and Bethlehem and all of that was here first and then was moved over. You can read the book by Horace uh, Butler called uh, When Rocks Cry Out. It talks about that also a great book by Jose Pimenta Bay called Othello's Children in the New World. And of that grouping of the House of Ebeling, you have the Saxons, the Teutons, the Bavarians, the Prussians, the, and then under the Prussians, the Omeotic Ishmali and the Hashemites, who became the assassins in history after the fall of the Grand Empire. And then under them, you had their slaves who were the Khazarians, and the Nordic Vikings. Then on the other side, you had the House of Wealth, the House Wells, or the Gulas, G-E-U-L-P-H-S, in which you had the southern tribes that consolidated around the root house of Moors called the Gules, out of which all of the so-called royal families of Europe or whatever exist today. This is also connected through the House of Washita, or the House of Tunica, through the Marquis de Messiaen Rouge, who is the lost Stephon, who they got out of of uh, France or Gaul during the so-called revolution. And of them, you have the Hibernians, the Gauls, which is the Franks, the more, excuse me, the Hibernians, the Black Irish, the Gauls, the Celts, the Franks, the New Orleans, the Old Etruscans, which are the Black Greeks, the Albigensians, the last of the Cathars, and the, the Huguenots and the Hessians. When these two factions began, they were predominantly Moorish, but as time went on, they fractured into Masonic loyalties, after which, through amalgamation, the, free, the Freemasons bred out the dark skinned Moors and then interbred with themselves to stay white. The culmination of this was then the extermination of the Cathars, of which ceased all the cathedral, great cathedral building in old Europe. All those cathedrals or whatever that was built over in Europe was based on the ones they was building over here. So within the drama of all these events, this caused both of the factions that was vying for the throne of Peter, which was the throne of Rome. So under Gregory the Seventh, they sought to establish the Vatican sought to establish the temporal power over the reality by taking control of the temple temporal lobe of the people by forcing the archetypical image of the white deity that had just been now used to galvanize Caucasian people behind the God in their own image, because up until that time, all of their gods was us. They then used that to forge the people into a certain direction, while secretly through Masonic ties, they worshiped us in secret. And still do to this day. So there were papal bulls that essentially established that all Moorish children go to Catholic school and what is going on today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a product of a Catholic school. Well, it was Lutheran, so it was more like Catholic light or more like Rosicrucian because now when I look at the crest for the school, it's actually the same crest that uh, Francis Bacon 
a.k.a. St. Germain, the Count St. Germain, used to represent his seals, also known as Shakespeare or the Shakespeare, of which he then created a corporation, which was a company of 35 writers under him that were compelled to write about the destruction of the Moorish Empire in secret and the resurrection of that through the editing and creating of the Bible, which is a master grimoire or spellbook of which Noble Joe Ali said in the end times he would look in that and use that as a means to bind the devil. And here we are. So in that, the Catholic Post didn't mean to limit the time of the... The Catholic Post meant to limit the time of the soul's immortality, see what I'm saying, by tapping into the temporal lobe. And through this control, they were able to establish Gregory as the time interface of which Gregory became the basis of the time manipulation scheme, again, manipulation of gravity, because this represented the gravity of the Catholic Church became too much for the basic people to bear, and thus they buckled to it. And once they did that, he could then impose himself as the archetypical creator of a timeline that could then infuse their temporal lobe and his temporal power into keeping him into a perpetual control through the artificial reality created by the Council of Nicaea under the black Pope Militates to allow white people to eventually become a, be welcomed into the human family. So specifically speaking, these elements have led to the basis as to why we are so hated in this reality. Because it wasn't the Africans that were involved with all of this like that. They, again, became byproducts. So they tell you themselves they've always been enslaved by somebody. We have been told that we have been enslaved by somebody, but the physical evidence that represents that has been altered to associate ourselves with a people who have been subjugated due to their prisoner of war status based upon traditional tribal infight usually due to some sort of sexual mutilation ritual between the tribes. They practice incest in Africa and all that. All that stuff is regular. You know, rape is like nothing. You know what I mean? But you could say the same thing here. Yet the vibrational frequency is a little different. Because the weight of responsibility, all of the power and the money and stuff they have and the stuff that they can do, they're not doing it. They're allowing themselves to become victims. They're allowing their children to be sold off piecemeal by cult, to cult members, open cult members. You know what I'm saying? So, again, as the Gregorian calendar was established, Gregory now becomes the, the, the time point for them to be able to focus their energy front. And then how many calendars came after that? Just Centennial and this one and that one and all of that. Therefore, that system is, again, always about have, always having to upgrade itself based upon the fact that they cannot continue to control the temporal lobe of the people because the people are what's keeping gravity in motion. It's our collective understanding that gravity exists that keeps us on the ground. If we collectively agree that it does not exist or cannot bind us anymore, we rise up. If everybody in the country today, people really want to do something, it's not about protesting. You protest for real. The way you protest for real is everybody in the country not go to work. That means everybody in the bank, in the lower levels, everybody in, in, the, in the bus system, everybody in the school, every, nobody leave their crib until the government ceases to exist in its present capacity. Nobody do nothing people really misunderstand the power of indifference. <laughs> it's easy. They want to make you think that you got to fight them on a level to do that, when really it's the opposite. All you got to do is choose not to participate. That's what you do when you file paperwork. You're saying that I'm choosing not to participate in the game that you've accumulated. Yet, because you're going to force me to do so, I have to establish a boundary between me and you to do that, and that is the straw person if used correctly. They have no business knowing what nationality and all that stuff you are because you don't have no passport that reflects that. So regards to what you're saying, 
what I'm saying? You have no physical documentation other than that which you create to do that. So it's really then about you. So the more we are planning to get to where we need to go at a point by using the same methods that we've been using, the more we're fooling ourselves. It's not about being better than one another. It's about understanding that the only way that this is going to happen is if we choose to make it happen. And to choose to make it happen is to choose what side of the fence you're going to be on. So all of these niggas that's making all this money and throwing all of this money in your face for the past 20 years in rap, they're not going to stop doing that if all of us decide that we're not going to support mainstream whatever because they have more to lose. We have nothing to lose. You don't have no money. If you, My grandma said, if you sleep on the bed, you can't, if you sleep on the floor, you can't fall out the bed. <laughs> so you're already, we're already here. Nobody is more dejected. We, let me tell you something about the black man before we close out. The black man, the original Asiatic black man, the Moab, the original singularity is the only thing in this universe that can check the so-called white man. And not only that, it's the only thing in the universe, in this society, that does what the hell it wants to do. We are the only people in this world that regards to what we will still be on the corner smoking weed, <laughs> drinking, we will still blast our music, we will still wear our pants down to our ass, we will show you how destructive and dis- disjointed this society is. And instead of being revered for that, his father, his mother, his woman, his children, everybody shits on him. And that's real, including himself. And that's not me hating on women. That's not me hating on men. That's not me hating on black people. This is what's happening. This is what's happening to your sons, your babies, my sons, my daughters, your babies every day. The only thing in this universe, the gangs in this country is going to be the country's last hope. It ain't going to be the cops. It ain't going to be the National Guard. It ain't going to be the militias. It's going to be the same banging, thug-ass, cripped in blood, el and niggas, Latin king. We don't give a fuck. Excuse, excuse my harshness. It's real. And nobody want to come to the aid, but everybody in the world is waiting. That's why Chuck D went and started doing Air America. <laughs> Same station named after the CIA drug front that was moving drugs and weed and technology out of Laos and artifacts, Nagar artifacts out of Laos that they made a movie of with Robert Downey and Mel Gibson. Jesuit and the uh, and the mind control slave. You know what I'm saying? It's real, y'all. So we have to pray for him, and we have to help get him back in his right position to the point where his woman has faith in him again. And it's not going to happen if we're backbiting each other as to who's right about what and who is most important and qualified to do what. Instead of finding out who's qualified, why don't the qualified people do what they're supposed to do? I strive to do that every day, but I can't do it alone. But at the same time, I can't do it and just allow anybody to 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 destroy that. Because there's some people, based upon when I said look in your house for secret enemies, the 10th, 11th, 12th house, look, look in those houses to find out because you have some people that spot out of your friends. And there's nothing you can do to turn them away from what it is they came in your life to do because this is a pre-karmic thing. But again, I don't personally believe in karma. Because if karma existed, then the white man be out of here. <laughs> to me. But it has but it obviously exists because people agree that it does. So again, I have to look at weigh the perception of everything else and then my own. And then work in the middle pillar. And that's all we can do. Extremism is for the weak. It's about learning how to choose what not to give your energy to more than what to give your energy to. Discerning, you pick your friends like you pick your fruit. You don't pick your friends like you eat potato chips. 
So with that, like I said, anybody wants to be involved in our Katika Red and Blue Pacina prep class, holler at us at House of L at Hotmail dot com. H O U S E O F E L at Hotmail dot com. Also, check out um, www.asiadadukatiers dot com, as well as www.sagasad dot com. Thank you for all for participating and being with us again, and transpiring with us through the dialogue. And um, we're gonna have a special guest next Monday that we'll talk about on Friday show. So with that, uh, we say peace and blessings, and thank you for all participating and and helping raise the vibration of our people, all of our people. You know, because again, without you. We wouldn't be here doing this. And if I wasn't doing this, you know, who knows? If we wasn't doing this, who knows? You know what I mean? So, again, man, love to all of you. And uh, we'll speak again. Peace.